welcome back to the podcast guys and welcome riley thank you riley is our videographer he's come to bali to help us shoot for our youtube to record these podcasts you were helping us earlier in the year in australia as well yep. and we were literally filming a podcast last night and we were sitting there going actually you know what Riley has a pretty incredible story that could be cool to share on our podcast. So we thought uh, we would do that tonight before you go back home to Australia. Have you ever been on a podcast before? No. First time? Yep, first time. Great. All right, so a bit of a backstory. Riley, 21 years old. Yep. 21 years old. He doesn't look it. You're a big man for a 21 year old. 21 years old, already have your own business. Uh, you have traveled to how many countries? 13 I think yeah. and most of those like filming and doing you what yeah. you do for a profession yeah pretty much just traveling around filming so that's pretty impressive <laughs> and that's what I would like to dig into in this podcast when I was 21 years old I had no idea what I was doing absolutely no idea and for you to find your passion so early and then commit to it and build it and get to a point where you have a thriving business already at such a young age is very cool it's pretty rare and uh, maybe you can share some insight uh, and help some other people maybe with that. So I think just to get started, when did uh, you know that videography and photography and just creating in general was going to be something that you would do for a living? I think it started probably when I was like 15. We were on a trip in Europe with my family and I was just filming on my phone and just loved it. And uh, yeah, when I got back, we were there for Christmas. My birthday is in February. When we got back, I basically asked for a camera for my birthday. And it all kind of started there. So what was that? Like year 10 at school, I think. And then, uh, yeah, just just kept doing it as a hobby. And then it just turned into a, into a job quite quickly. I want everyone to understand <laughs> how interesting this really is. So you started, like, let's say you're 15, yep. 21 years old now. Mm-hmm. How much do you make a year? Uh, Aussie, about a hundred, hundred and twenty thousand. Making videos for brands and companies and things like that. Yep, yep, pretty much. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> that's really impressive. Um, so when you knew that that's what you wanted to do, did you see that there was a career path for that? Was that kind of confusing? Were your parents and everyone saying, "Ah, oh, like that's not a job"? What are you talking about? Yeah, I think because I'm so young, I just grew up in like the YouTube space that was my entertainment outside of school I wasn't watching TV I was watching that I was going through Instagram and you know you see the people like Casey Neistat at the time like Fun for Louie all of them Uh, and it just looked uh, I mean you could just see you could do it it was it was a job it was possible I never wanted to be a YouTuber I never wanted to be a vlogger anything like that but uh, you could just see it was it was a possibility so yeah, I think everyone around me was really supportive once you could explain it. And I think when I started earning money and stuff, it was a lot more clear to them. But uh, yeah, my parents and stuff are always very supportive of whatever I wanted to do. Dad bought my first drone. Well, his drone, but turned into my drone. Um, and yeah, it, it just it just grew from there. I suppose that's something very different about your generation. When I was growing up, when I was 18, 15 16 that definitely didn't come across as a real job like youtube and instagram and all that was coming but being a videographer maybe you would think oh you work for a television show or yeah you're doing like news station and you carry that big chunky camera that's what i always would have thought it was when i told my grandma what i was doing she said uh oh i know you can be a photographer for the police like shooting crime scenes and stuff and that's what she thought I wanted to do and yeah very much don't want to do that but Mm -hmm. um yeah I guess that's just the different generations of uh me and my friends and stuff could see it and I think mum and dad could see it I don't know how but then yeah one step further and they grandma was like what's this what are you doing (laughs) right and so when you started uh, actually practicing how did you first get into it that's a question that's really important because a lot of people they want to do something and then it just seems really daunting and they're like, I'm not very good at this, so I'm not even going to start. How did you just get started? Uh, just just taking photos of things around the area at home, of sunsets, of beaches and stuff. I think I got a drone really early on. So that was like very quickly could do something not many people could. Um, so I just kind of 
yeah i don't know you just put that up and everyone was really impressed because it was pretty early it was like the first mavic so everyone was really impressed by the drones because they just didn't exist or they weren't very popular and i kind of just went like oh, this, is, this is cool i'm getting you know people are interested and stuff and just kind of kept doing it and yeah i don't know i just just doing it for fun and it turned into a job basically yeah so how <laughs> did it turn into a job what was the first paycheck what was the um, first job oh you'd get like friends and stuff saying can you shoot my birthday and all of that which are like the most boring things in the world but you got to start somewhere um but then i think i was working for like a supermarket shooting uh all their products for their website and that was a real slog but that was kind of the first time it was like you know rock up for work and money from this instead of well most people working at the supermarket behind the checkout and i was doing it very differently um that was the first time where i was i was actually on like wage there i was there every week um and then there was a small company in adelaide back home a food company that kind of just you know i don't know how I, I was sending dms and stuff and they just took a chance on this 16 year old with no portfolio nothing and it just turned into into a good little relationship and they would put me on to more people and it just it just spread like that and that's something that we need to dig into a bit more because yeah, that first job didn't just fall into your lap. I know that for a fact because uh, the way that we linked up together, you sent us a DM or an email, I think it was. You sent us an email probably earlier. four years ago. It started earlier than that. Yes. I don't know why I'll admit this, but yeah, I think I sent a DM basically like, hey, yeah. you want to work with me? And yeah. of course, you guys had, I don't know, four or 500,000 followers at the time and why would you ever you're working with Elliot at the time like I don't know I just sent it why not is kind of my philosophy and then yeah you go it turned that, into <laughs> yeah that was that, like for a 16 year old to actually have the guts to send a message to you know anybody even if it's a supermarket chain or whatever to actually put themselves out and say hey can we work together or can I offer you something how do we how can we move forward in some way? I've, this is the value that I can give you and uh, this is what I hope we can do together. You sent us a DM, like plenty of DMs and we connected in a small way where I was like... You kind know, way of saying I yeah, sent a lot of messages. A lot of messages, but just like, really oh, this is so cool, anything. guys. <laughs> or how do you think about this? And Marie and I always replied to our DMs. Um, so like we could see you there over a while. And then you definitely sent an email because that's how I found it. Um, you sent an email with, which was more like a actual proposal of like what you would like to do, what you can offer us. And then I think we just sent back, you know, thanks for the offer. Appreciate it. You know, we're not really looking for anyone right now. That was four years ago. And then because you reached out and because that was there, Marie and I at the beginning of this year or end of last year, we started thinking, hey, it'd be great to like fire up the YouTube again and maybe do some podcasts and have somebody with us a bit like uh, we did with Elliot because the period that we were with Elliot was amazing. And then like it went through COVID, Marie and I had a, it was really nice to have a break. We couldn't really handle the workload anymore. And like we're at a level now where we definitely don't have time to edit everything and shoot everything and don't even have the skill set to be honest. Like my videography now is very rusty and my editing. Um, but we remembered that, that email. And then I just went into my inbox, into the search bar, and I was just start searching for like, um, you know, videographer and then like some keywords. And then your email popped up again. I said to Marie, I'm like, remember this, this kid who was um, messaging us a lot? Look at his page now. He does these kind of videos. He's from Australia. I reckon he might be keen to, uh, you know, follow us around or do some travel and, and film with us. So we reached back out and sure enough, you were said, yeah, let's go for it. We sent a voice message. And I remember it. getting it at like nine o'clock in the morning and it was like, Marie Fee and Jake Snow sent you a voice message. And I was like, <laughs> what the heck? Is there this new feature where they can send it to all of their followers or something? Like what? what? And I think I waited a while to open it, like hours, waited till the afternoon. And yeah, just opened it. And it was basically, I think it was Marie, or not, I think it was you at the time, um, basically saying, yeah, you'd seen me around and yeah were you interested in jumping on a call or something and then yeah i replied and i think marie was on next and then we managed to you were in adelaide at the time so we went and go to coffee yeah. um which was at the time scary i don't know why like i don't know you guys were uh these you know people that were always up there 
traveling basically the dream and there's a chance that I could work with you and it was like it was scary it was exciting but it was scary and then about two minutes after meeting you it was just like chatting to a friend it was just like yeah you're a mate that's how that's how we love to surprise people and honestly most people on everyone on Instagram just normal people but uh, full credit to you though because when, at that age especially putting yourself out there following up like you sent plenty and you followed up and you said hey even if you know time's not right now like maybe in the future and then you would follow up say hey how about now that was that can get you very far in life and uh, Marie and I thinking back to some of our early times we were definitely similar to that we were not going to wait for things to fall into our lap because opportunities don't happen like that. You really have to fight for them and and earn them. And that means maybe you have to make 100 DMs to get one reply. Maybe you need to make those calls, go for those coffee dates, whatever it is, just to get a foot in the door. Um, but you did that. And that's something that is very rare. So maybe you can talk a little bit about your mindset uh, when you were getting started. A lot of people your age would just be partying, and not thinking too much about their career what's different about you yeah i think just the nature of like the jobs my parents did um i was never that interested in going out drinking partying it was just never i think like looking back i think that's why um parents never drink around home or anything so i i just was never that interested in it don't get me wrong i'll enjoy a a beer here and there with my mates at the pub or something but yeah i'm not a go out and party kind of guy I prefer the business side of things and all of that so yeah growing up I think the the mindset well growing up through the business was basically why not send this message uh to someone if they see it great if they don't I'm at the exact same place I was nothing to lose yeah nothing changed um I think when I was sending them to businesses in Adelaide it was a general rule was I'd send 50 and I'd get two replies yeah so one to 25 ratio and I remember saying that to people and they're like, oh, that's, that sucks, that's rough. Like, oh, are you okay? And I'm like, I don't care. I, like, it was one more job I didn't have before, so sick. Um, looking back and Marie showed me the DMs to you guys the other day and it's embarrassing. I <laughs> don't want to see them. Um, but I, like on your end, I would have seen it as just annoying, like this little pesty 16 year old messaging but i mean the there's, truth is there's that value to it i guess <laughs> anybody who's found success or is a bit of a hustler or works really hard and has taken chances themselves what they see is someone with persistence someone who's willing to take a chance someone who shows initiative someone who is a leader so for anyone out there who's like feeling that like weirdness like oh they're gonna think i'm the people who count won't think like that. They'll be like, wow, you know, this person really wants it. I need that kind of energy in my business. I, I need that energy around me. That's what most people who are running businesses and have, who've been through that themselves think. So that's a, that's a really good insight for anyone to have. I think I also just don't really care that much about how I come across. I don't really care about what Important. I wear. Like, that's I, hard. That's yeah. hard this day and age because uh, with social media and everyone showing like their dream life and that kind of thing, to not care about what other people think. Don't get me wrong. I still show the best parts of my yeah. life on Instagram and stuff. But day to day, like, you know, my morning coffee, I'll just rock up in Burks and socks and a hoodie and I just I just don't care. Like, I'm comfy. I rolled out of bed. I put some clothes on. Here I am. Not caring about what other people think is like having a superpower, (laughs) truly. Because as soon as you care what other people think, you are pandering to whatever they want in their life. And you're not following your own path. You're not following what you really want to do. You're doing what you think they would like you to do, which is just never, never good. Um, and we see that in our industry a lot. It grew. Like I remember through school, everyone would take the piss about, you know, Bradley Williams photography, like subscribe to my video and all of that, just messing around. But, uh, you know, I think through year 12, there was a real like click for me of I could do this as, as a, as a job, as a career. And I think my mindset changed and then I really started to focus on it. And then I think people around me at, at school, maybe, was starting to get a bit jealous or something and it, their mindset kind of changed away from you know taking the piss it was always just a laugh like i didn't care but it very quickly 
turn from you know annoying me to supporting me kind of a a laugh but also a small dig yeah yeah, yeah. always that little dig yeah there's, but that's also australian culture there's and, this thing in australia <laughs> called uh tall poppy syndrome you would know it very well but people from overseas might not know it but tall poppy syndrome is basically where if you're doing something different something that is not normal in your community and uh, you're really going for it what a lot of other people try to do is just cut you down because you're you're growing out of the crowd you're becoming the tall poppy you're making everyone else look bad or you're kind of showing them what they could do but they're not brave enough to do and so instead of everyone saying oh you go riley they will actually try to cut you down to feel better about themselves we had that a lot we when marie and i first started i got a crazy amount of shit from my friends footy mates my, from my footy mates uh, you can imagine me playing footy in australia it's a very tough sport and being really rough around all of these guys and then all of a sudden taking couples photos on instagram no shit kissing, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, posing yeah. and you know it was all about love and i was like letting my heart out oh man it was brutal the kind of attacks that i got from my mates as a joke but not really a joke you know they want you to quit yeah. they wanted me to say you guys are right this is stupid i'm an idiot like this is so cringe i'm gonna stop luckily for me um i just love marie so much that i was like i don't even care what they think like you I'm, like i don't care what my mates think if they think oh yeah riley what are you gonna be a videographer and you're like yeah actually i am yeah and I think recently in the, you know, from probably the middle of last year till now, it's kind of been just growth and working with you guys and traveling for different jobs and stuff and their mindset, you can see them all changing again to like, not we want to bring him down again, but like, oh, he's, he's, it's impressive. And then the jokes kind of come back a bit and stuff. And yeah, yeah I, I hate tuning my own horn and stuff, but you know when i'm around my friends and stuff sometimes i find it hard to talk about yeah i was just in bali for a week for work yeah i was a week before that in europe for five weeks and it's just hard to connect with them sometimes about that specifically um and when i do it's oh where were you now what are you doing now la, la, la. but yeah yeah i think there's <laughs> a quote that goes something like don't dim your light just so that other people can see clearly something like that and it's basically like if you're shining so bright that it's hard for other people you know that's how it is if you're doing something so amazing for them it's really hard to to take that and so you end up just dimming your light a bit and like playing down things and not really sharing exactly um what you're doing we we're like that quite a lot like marie and i don't really talk much about what we do with our family because first of all it's just a different world well, it's too hard to describe it's too hard to describe yeah. and secondly yeah we don't we don't want them to feel like you know their lives um are not enough or anything because totally they are and everyone's living differently and um some people want to live a quiet life some people want to travel a lot some people want to work really hard some people want to relax and that's completely fine so it is that's a good thing that you can do you know you don't have to talk about it sometimes unless they ask yeah yeah and like you said with your with your friends and your family and stuff they don't see the hours i've been sitting in that living room over there exactly. working every day today i worked I, don't know, I think i edited three videos or something yeah. like it doesn't sound like that much but when you know it is yeah and it's just sit there work 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 but then the reward and what they see is the traveling the money la la but they don't see the the back end of it and the, the business side of it the conversations the tough conversations the talking to a client that wasn't happy but all my clients are happy mm. but yeah, you know <laughs> yeah having to like iterate on a video that you thought was perfect yeah you, damn it yeah you're so proud of something you're like oh can we change this it's like yeah no we, we didn't shoot that or you know the, it's just the hard conversations of trying to describe to a business or something that you know, it's not what they asked for la, la. doesn't matter but, but <laughs> that's one thing to, that we could talk a little bit about from the outside looking in on instagram and youtube it seems like a very glamorous life and it is i think the freedom that we have is the most glamorous thing 
we can wake up every day and decide what we want to do with our day. We work a lot. That's the bit that people don't see. Like from the moment we wake up, you know, I'll go to the gym. But when I get home from the gym, Marie and I, from nine till seven, it's not constant work. It's just always thinking about, okay, what's next? What do we have to do? What do we need to shoot? What about um, this person? Have they done that? We need to delegate this over to that. And it's just ongoing. But the glamorous part is, is like we could do this from Bali. We can do it from Mallorca. We can do it anywhere, really. And in between, we're taking these really nice clips of like maybe we sat by the pool for 10 minutes or maybe Marie was decorating the kitchen for like five minutes, get a little video of that. But in between, it's a lot of work. And you've you've seen that now, especially working yeah. with us. Yeah, big time. That it's, yeah, you pull back the curtain, and there's way more work than what people think. Yeah, yeah. The you're always on the phone. You're always an email. Their calendars are packed every morning. They're checking what's on, what's coming up, and yeah, you're the. I think the value of working with you guys for me a lot is just seeing how you do it and just listening to conversations that you're having just when you're on the phone and I'm in the corner working, just pull the airport out and just listen to, to what you're saying. Cause I don't know, I'm sure I won't get to this stage like you maybe, I don't know, but hey, never say never, never say never, but, uh, you know, all the little bits along the way that just the conversations you're having, how you're dealing with a, a conflict of someone at the business or anything like that. Just, just absorbing it all and learning. Yeah. I would never trade it for anything and neither would you, I would assume, because we're learning every day, we're trying new things all the time. We're so fortunate to even be able to do what we do. The world is changing so quickly in this industry especially and in a lot of others, but for anyone out there that's thinking, I don't know if it's for me or not, um, you just like ask yourself, do you love working for yourself? Do you love being creative? Do you love sharing with people? If you love all of those things, then I would highly recommend you pick up a camera, start recording yourself, start sharing what you pick like, up your phone. pick up your phone even, just start creating things and sharing them because we have never had an opportunity. No, no generation has ever had this kind of opportunity that we have to reach thousands, let alone millions of people around the world just from this thing in your hand. And to be able to get a message out there to people that you really care about, to be able to edit a video, put it online, and even a hundred people watch it. Like if you think about it, that is yeah, it so cool. I get so annoyed when you put a video up and it gets a thousand, two thousand views. But imagine sitting in front of two thousand people and going, "Hey, watch my video." It's you, amazing. Like, it, it sucks. I'm scared showing you guys a video I make. Like we sit there and we watch it for twenty minutes not in silence but like here watch it criticize it and it's yeah yeah, that's how you grow a lot of people a lot of our students for club life design and stuff that might post a reel and it gets 2,000 views and they're like oh man my my reels are flopping and if you compare them to say the ones that do well they get 10,000 yeah it got less but it's still a lot of people 2,000 people (laughs) and if you think what did you put in that video that might have given that person value or help them connect with you as a person or made them go, oh, I really love this. If you did something in that video that did any of those things, now you have 2,000 people that really like you or they really like what you do or they really want to learn from you. And uh, it's all about capturing those people that are watching. If it's 2,000 people that just went like this, it means nothing. So that the, that's why the content is so important. And then there's so many opportunities from there if you've got, 2000 people that are dedicated to you and are willing to buy your thing or follow what you do then yeah endless opportunities 2000s a lot yeah <laughs> and so do you ever think that you're 21 now do you feel like you're going to try work a certain way for a few years and then you're going to try to do something else is there a future for you where you think you want to expand your business do you have any business ideas yeah what are you thinking kind of just at the moment it's just been just go where it goes i think most recently the biggest like oh this could change a lot was uh tiktok reached out and we've started working with them um they 
as an example of not needing the highest quality content all the time, they literally said to me, it can be shot on any camera. It can be shot on your phone, your drone, your camera, a GoPro, literally anything, and they'll accept it. Um, but that basically, just the nature of the agreement with them is I can travel wherever I want and create content about it. And I'm not guaranteed money, but essentially every three months, there's a certain amount of videos they'll buy and for example Europe was a holiday with my girlfriend we were planning just a summer holiday and it basically still was that but I just filmed it on my phone I didn't really I took my camera but I didn't really use it I just filmed it on my phone and I've managed to get 30 videos out of that and basically pay for the whole trip for both of us and that basically went like oh my god I could go and live with you guys in Mallorca or I could go and you know have an apartment in London for summer or something and just earn money there work on that and that's basically going to pay for everything and then any other job on top of that will will earn me money so at the moment it's kind of just do that see what comes of it and like that TikTok opportunity was just a random email through my website from them they saw my work somewhere I had no idea where and I think the lady who reached out said she followed me and it basically just went from there. And wow. you never know what opportunity is going to come from, from anything. Yeah, the world really is your oyster. And what I love about that and what I love about kind of what we all do is that you don't need a university degree for any of this. You just need a mobile phone. I was at uni, but I dropped out. Yeah, <laughs> I dropped out of uni too. You need a mobile phone, you need a bit of creativity, you need to be consistent, you need to be willing to not care what people think and share and just keep sharing until... And take the opportunities. Yeah. Like you don't know what that will lead to. Working with a a food brand back at home led to XYZ, which then led to XYZ and it just kept expanding. And then, you know, working with you guys turned into... I'm traveling to the Gold Coast in a couple of weeks for a job that someone saw me through you and yeah it's just take every opportunity is all I would ever say to people yeah for sure and if you are young and you are wanting to get into something like we're doing you just got to keep trying lots of things I one of the I did it differently to you I really only found what I liked when I was 24 so still, th- you've still got three years to get there. But I, I still feel like that was young. I was pretty young. Uh, even if you find it when you're 30, 35, it doesn't matter. But uh, I was 24 when I met Marie. And when we started shooting together, I started like creating. And that's when I fell in love with creating and sharing with people, educating. And from there, I just followed that through. But before I was 24, I think I had 20 different jobs tried a lot of different things so you got to get those reps in you got to try out multiple things to even know what you might like you were really lucky because like you knew you wanted to do video and then you just did it and you're like yeah i love this and i could turn everything through school all of that into that i could turn writing an assignment where i was meant to write a poem or something i could turn that into a video somehow yeah and every opportunity i could i would just turn it into that and that's only because I knew what I wanted to do and I know I'm very, very lucky for that. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, it's... Well, we're going into a more digital world, for sure. It's only going to get more digital, which means we're going to all communicate as humans more online together. And the way to communicate with other people online is through text, through photos, imagery, or through videos. And if you know how to communicate with people through any of those three things, if you're a great writer, if you're a great photographer, if you're a great videographer, or audio, or audio as well, podcast too, <laughs> if you can do any of those things online and communicate and attract and uh, connect with people, you are going to have a, a really uh, big strength yeah. that you could use in anything, in any job. And I don't think you have to necessarily be obsessed with the photo and stuff it can be if you want to be a doctor you can still create content around that yeah exactly if you want to be a builder you can still create content around that and yeah there's just so many opportunities now there really is well riley i'm i'm grateful that we're having this conversation i don't know what the future holds for you but i know it's going to be amazing and i hope that uh you can hang around with marie and i for a little bit longer and um For anyone that's watching this, you guys, uh, make sure you follow Riley on Insta. That's where you're at mostly. 
follow Riley on Insta. He does some good kind of behind the scenes of like what Marie and I are up to as well when he's hanging out with us. Uh, he's a, an amazing guy and uh, very inspirational, especially for your age. So Thank exciting you for excited for all of the good things to come. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. We'll see you guys next time. Riley will be probably behind the camera on the next one. Yeah, there's no one sitting there now, so... We're stressing about the cameras, I hope but it's I all, think they're I, doing all right. I hope we recorded it properly. <laughs> all right. Thanks. Catch you later, guys. See ya.